Hi, I'd like to give you a little tour of the basics of Glasshouse and what it is and how you interact with it within a virtual world. This is Glasshouse, this window here. This is running on my PC and it can hook up to data sources that my PC has access to, query them, and put 3D representations of them into a virtual world of my choice. I've got Glasshouse right now configured to talk to some MySQL databases on my PC, and I have Glasshouse hooked up to Green Phosphor's public hub, which is an infrastructure that lets public virtual worlds talk to people's glass houses that are hooked up publicly. I'm going to minimize that. This window you're looking at now, this is a virtual world. This is Green Phosphor's customized version of Sun Wonderland. And you can see uh, Ed London's in here. He's the CTO of Green Phosphor. I think he's just left his avatar logged in. You can see that we've changed the avatars in here. They're just spheres with camera lenses on them. Here's what mine looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and interact with my instance of Glasshouse. Uh, actually, first, let me, let me talk a little bit about navigation in here. It's just arrow keys, page up, page down, some other keys. Fo up arrow and down arrow are forward and back. Left and right are left and right arrow. Page up and page down will move me up and down. I and K let me tilt up and down the direction I'm looking. And Z and X go left and right. Pretty standard video game controls. This menu option we added to Wonderland starts us off with the process of putting a, a 3D graph into the virtual world. It's put a little sphere inside the world. This sphere represents the Green Phosphor public hub. And it's a CICP object. CICP is the open protocol that we've implemented in multiple virtual worlds that lets them talk to Glasshouse. Any CICP object, if I mouse over it, is going to pop up a title that tells me what it is. If I then click the object, the title will stay on. If I click the title, a menu comes down below it. I have an X that I can use to close the whole thing. And this menu right here, in this case, this represents the Glasshouse instances that are currently connected to Green Phosphor's public hub. I'm going to choose mine, Arkowitz. So my Glasshouse now put this cube into the environment. I'm going to click the cube, click the title, and I have a menu. This is the list of starting points, starting graphs that I have configured in my Glasshouse. And I'm going to use GridStack. It's a plug-in. And this plug-in shows me what databases I've configured with my Glasshouse. I have three different MySQL databases I've configured. I'm going to choose the demo database. Now when I take any of these actions, select any of these options from these menus, it's sending a message out all the way to my Glasshouse running on my PC, which is then responding by putting 3D content into the world. I'm going to shoot way up and look down because this is kind of cool. This is a representation of my entire database. Let's look at it this way. So these are all the tables in my database and all the columns in those tables. They're in alphabetical order by table. So as I drag my mouse across this way, I'm seeing the different uh, first columns of all the tables. This table, for example, import stage.country. It's got a whole lot of columns. You can see them all along here. 
what this plug-in is waiting for me to do is to select three columns um, to form a graph. So I'm going to zoom in here. Again, I'm just using page down. I'm using X at the same time to move to the right while I move down. Now I'm going to turn while I'm doing that. And now look up a bit. Let's see what we've got. Uh, all of our graphs are designed for you to just explore them, drag your mouse around and see what these things represent. We don't pop text up uh, right away because we want you to see the patterns in the data first and then see what the, uh, what the actual fields are that you're looking at and the actual values. But let's do oil production. So we'll pick the country column of the oil production table as our x-axis and we'll pick year as our z-axis and we close that guy and then we'll pick k barrels per day, 1,000 barrels per day average over the year uh, as our measure. Once the message, once Glasshouse has received three messages, one saying what the x is, one what the z is, and one what the measure is, it's going to build a SQL query, query the database, and put the results back into the environment. That's what it's doing right now. So now we have oil production. And it's, it's a pretty interesting picture. Um, the Soviet Union used to pump out an amazing amount of oil. Um, it's right here. The U.S. has declining production. Um, Russian Federation really picking up. You can see some kind of, looks like some artificial limiting there in Saudi Arabia. Iran, just to have a whole lot of production. I'm just dragging my mouse around to see, you know, if I see an interesting thing in here, I just put my mouse pointer over and see what it is. There's a little peak in Canada. Now, this, these gray boxes, this is a legend. These represent entire columns or entire rows of the data, and they have an auto highlight that's going to highlight the whole column or row when I drag over them. So those are the basics, uh, and I encourage you to Get a hold of Glasshouse yourself and give it a try. Thanks a lot. Bye.